least the, there was diffusion of power between the committees and the agencies. So the unified uh, executive branch theory that Cheney uh, advocates is not, uh, I don't think is a very good thing. But anyway, so we have this, this uh, power um, accrual to the president, and the war on terror is uh, going to make it even worse, I think. And if we have another um, major terrorist attack, uh, what's left of the checks and balances system and civil liberties uh, may take even worse hits. And uh, on that optimistic note, I guess I'll just take questions. So if anybody has a question, uh, I'd be happy to answer it. Um, Yes, sir. Ivan, uh, which, which era of the United States government would you say we had the best U.S. foreign policy? And should we emulate it today or should we well, move I, forward then? Well, actually, our foreign policy for most of our republic has been fairly good. I mean, this interventionism is an aberration since the Cold War. Now, I'm not advocating getting into World War I or Spanish-American War, but those tended to be blips uh, on the screen and I think, uh, I guess the golden age of foreign policy was probably um, in the late 1800s. Um, you know, Grover Cleveland, um, some of those presidents in there. Um, and it was good, actually, between the wars with Harding and Coolidge. Um, uh, the Harding and Coolidge reacting to, in addition to World War I, Woodrow Wilson was the, probably the most interventionist president because he romped around uh, Latin America. And when um, Harding got in office and Coolidge, they, made, they, they said no more of that. And so they, they reduced drastically US meddling in Latin America. And even Hoover and FDR uh, followed that. So um, FDR, of course, was scheming to get into bigger things. But uh, uh, so between the wars, it was, it was uh, Pretty good, and probably in the late 1800s, it was good. Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, that's an interesting thing. I, um, I just, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, she said, "Do you think we're going to attack Iran?" Um, well, I've been going up to the Capitol Hill. I just went up, uh, 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 let's see, Thursday, and met with some offices. Uh, we're meeting with them, uh, con congressional offices trying to uh, say uh, putting sanctions on Iran or going to war with Iran is not the solution. And I think it's very difficult to say because all the ra a rational person would say, even, even a person in the Bush administration will say, God, we've got this ghastly Iraq thing. Iran could, could help us out there uh, if they wanted to. Um, and besides, Iran's got all the cards now. Uh, and also, uh, we're a lame duck administration. We just got trounced in the congressional elections. The, the population of the United States, or most people, think we ought to get out of Iraq. So, gee whiz, why would we attack somebody else? Uh, even a, even a neoconservative looking at the facts rationally would, would say that. But who knows with this administration? There is a possibility <clears throat> that uh, back when Reagan was president, uh, he did a peacekeeping mission to Lebanon, and 241 Americans got killed because they start the troop. Our troops started, uh, as we all do in all these uh, interventions, we start out with some noble goal, and then we have mission creep, and we end up fighting on one side of a civil war. Happened in Lebanon with Reagan. Happened in Somalia with Clinton. But in, in Reagan's case, he told the British, who were the colonial, the former colonial po power in Grenada that he wasn't going to invade Grenada. But then this barracks blew up in Lebanon. He had to change the subject, so he invaded Grenada. So it could be possible that there's this distraction um, factor. But I'm not sure what they get. I'm not sure what they get from that, because at the end of the day, the Lebanon thing was gone. Reagan decided to re withdraw from that. They're, they haven't decided to withdraw uh, from Iraq. Now, it could be. Uh, that if they attacked Iran, they could use the cover to withdraw from Iraq, because, you know, we're tough, that, that sort of thing. But attacking Iran is a really bad idea, because I assure you, they do not know where all those nuclear facilities are. The Iranians will merely redouble their efforts to get nuclear weapons. And you're also, the, the population of Iran is very young. They hate this regime. 
And if you attack it in any way, either with economically, economically with sanctions or military power, you have a rally around the flag effect. It happens in any country. If this country were attacked, you know, people would rally to George Bush, even if they were liberal Democrats, probably. So it, it has this effect no matter where it's used, and you're going to keep that regime, that, uh, that ugly regime in Iran in power for, for decades. And the, my answer is, I don't know, but I, 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 think the pro, I think the possibility is diminishing if you are a rational actor. The, the, the realists seem to be on the ascent in the administration uh, as opposed to the neoconservatives. But, but in this administration, it's such a cowboy administration that uh, they may very well do it. I mean, Cheney clearly is, uh, if you've seen some of the press, Cheney is trying to put a box around Bush and make it um, box him in so that he has to do it. Uh, but um, I don't know. The answer is I don't know. I think it's uh, the, the somewhat it's somewhat diminished chances, but it's still possible. And you, we all know what the, the administration is capable of. So um, it's it's hard to say.